Good morning guys, good morning internet, good morning YouTube, this is EJ back once again with another narrated time-lapse video uh, going over some of my older work. Uh, this time around we're going to be taking a look at uh, a fan art of mine that I did for Star Wars Rebels. Um, Technically, I did it for a contest, but I never finished it in time uh, to turn it in. And so I kind of discarded it because I wasn't able to complete it at that time for the contest. And then I picked it up three or four years later. Um, I think the contest happened in 2015. And then I picked it up sometime around the end of 2017 or 2018. Uh, and then kind of worked on it on and off um, until I finished it this year so yeah um, now when the video started you saw that there was already a bunch of stuff going on like there was already color in and you can see that the characters have already been pretty much sketched in so like a huge chunk of the process is missing because when I did this piece in 2015, I was not recording my videos yet, or I was not recording my artwork yet. So that part of the process is gone, it's missing, it's not part of this video. But it's okay, because pretty much the whole thing is kind of like um, a revamp of sorts. Um, Really, the only thing that I kept from the old version was this sketch that I already have done. Um, which, you know, I kind of wish I recorded that part because really I, I spent a great deal of time sketching this scene out. And I, I think this is one of my better sketches. And I think this is one of my better line arts. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's... Personally, I feel that it's still good. It's so good that, or I did such a good job with the line art that when I picked it up two or three years later, I didn't have to do a whole lot of edits on it. Um, right now, you see me editing some of the line art because some of it kind of looked wonky once I started painting it um, the first time around. Um, but you can see that I didn't really do a whole lot of edits. I kept most of the characters intact. I changed both Ezra's and Zeb's arms because those were kind of looking funky to me once I start coloring it in um, the first time around. So I kind of redid that. Um, Hera's body, uh, you saw me sketch it out, but I didn't really need to sketch it out in all honesty. I think the old one was just, was just as good as a sketch as the new one. The only other thing that I changed in this line art is the floor um well actually i did a few more i extended the scene and initially it was like that square um it was in a square sketch or the, the whole photo was in a square format essentially um and I, I felt like the characters were too boxed in so what i decided to do was kind of Zoom the camera out a little so I re-rendered my old scene because I did a 3d mock-up scene of this illustration back in 2015 so I reopened that old file kind of re-rendered it uh, with the camera zoom out a little bit so I could give my characters some breathing space because there were two crap in that square format and as you can see right now I'm extending the whole scene out so I'm adding a little bit more um, to the scene um, and this really became problematic for me in the end later on you can see um, because of the camera's angle like the camera's angle is too wide um, and in real life I feel like I don't even think it would exist I, I think cameras angles like this would exist um, but it would have the fisheye effect instead of it just, you know, instead of it being the way it is in my photo. So, yeah, um, 
the angle is just really tough to work with because I, I know that I wanted to give my characters breathing space because we're too crap in that square format but I know that the moment I extended it you know from that original square format I knew that the perspective was just gonna go off like I already knew that and I knew that because of the renders the renders were already looking really bad when I when I zoom the camera out a little bit so i already knew that perspective wise i was gonna have some issues but i took a risk and i decided you know what i'll i'd rather have them have some breathing room and have the extra sides or the sides of the image just be a little bit off perspective wise um just so that the image isn't too feeling cramped so yeah, it was a decision on my part. But yeah, so those are the changes I did with the line art. I, I did two of the characters' arms. I extended the line art uh, to encompass more of the scene, which caused some perspective issues that I tried to solve later on. And I also redid the floor because um, the floor's perspective is really, really off in this one. Um, when I re-rendered my old scene, I used uh, a floor guide this time around to kind of help me figure out what the perspective of the floor is. So uh, you'll see me redo that sketch out in a few minutes and lay it out in accordance to the render guides that I put down. But yeah. Um, Perspective wise, um, this, uh, <laughs> this image was just problematic, that's all I could say. So yeah, looking at the sketch right now, I, I am really impressed at the sketch that I did four or five years ago. Um, it stood the test of time. Um, I think I might have mentioned this in some of my videos before where some artwork I do, you know, doesn't really stand the test of time. Um, I do artwork that I did five, seven years ago and I take a look at it. And when I see it, all I see are pretty much errors, you know, like stuff that I want to redo, want to fix, want to, or whatnot. Um, but with this particular sketch, I mean, aside from all the edits that I'm doing, the characters themselves, I thought was done so well that, that I just decided to keep it. You know, I decided not to do a whole lot of changes to it. Um, so yeah. Uh, I kept the characters pretty much as is. And as I mentioned before, uh, none of the work, none of the color work that I did from 2015, I kept. I pretty much restarted everything. Now, this chair that I just drew on the lower left gave me so much trouble. So much trouble throughout the whole painting process. And this is what I mean about the angle of the whole scene. Um... Basically, when I rendered this scene in Blender, uh, or when I made a 3D mock-up in Blender, I had a camera angle set very, very wide so I could have all of the characters in the photo. Because um, they were inside, basically, a very limited space. Um, I mean, they're inside a spaceship, essentially. This area that they're in is inside a spaceship, and it's kind of crap. Like, when I modeled it, and you take a look at it, it's basically, you know, maybe about the size of a B-52 Fortress, like, inside, you know? There's not that much wiggle room, not that much walking room around for people. And so, basically, when you want to take a scene of five characters inside a cockpit, that's very small 
like the one I had modeled, you kind of need to set the camera angle very wide. And unfortunately, when you have camera angles that wide, you know, the lens start to really distort towards the edges, which is what is going on in my scene right now. You know, if you see the 3D mock-up render, re-render that I did, you'll see that the chairs are really, really off. And so when I sketch this chair in, I basically just have to reinvent <laughs> my own uh, perspective. I mean, that chair does not follow the rules of perspective from the camera. You know, I kind of just decided that I was going to have it follow the angle of the floor so that it won't be so obnoxious looking because I felt like it was kind of obnoxious looking when i try to draw it the way it was in the 3d mock-up it, it just looked so off it was calling for attention and i kind of wanted to mute that chair because yeah i just wanted to mute it <laughs> it just felt like attention getting for me and so i figured the best way for me to mute it is for it to just follow the floor's perspective or something and make it look like it's correct even though it's really not so yeah um this was a hard decision for me to make when i was doing this illustration because you know if i had kept it in that square format that i originally had it the characters would just feel so crap now that i extended it into a more widescreen format Sure, the characters got breathing room now, you know, they're not as cramped within that photo. But then I'm having the angle distortion, lens distortion problem. So you can't win them all. So I just tried to do my best. Uh, but yeah, you know, sketch wise, it worked out. I mean, it. it the distortion towards the end of the towards the edges of the photo wasn't isn't too distracting i feel like you know and when i put this up for critique you know hardly anyone ever mentioned anything about it maybe one or two people had mentioned something about the distortion but not enough for me to be really concerned about it so yeah now you can see right here i'm redoing the floors um so basically i decided to sketch out the floor first in a flat format so then what i could do is um distort it with the perspective distortion tool um so at first you just try you know at first i just tried doing it with just that one um panel and then i kind of you know decided that i was at first I decided to do it with just that one panel of the floor, you know, but then I realized, you know what, I'll just make like a multiple panel thing. And then um, you distort that. And so you see me basically do that now. <laughs> this is just what I'm doing right now. I'm setting that floor up perspective wise. And then as soon as I have it set, I'm basically going to erase the parts that I don't need. Uh, which is obviously the parts that the characters and the foreground area is in and then yeah after this the sketch is for the most part complete um so i'm just gonna start working on the colors pretty soon
So I did some preps on the sketch uh, to prepare for the coloring part. I kind of wanted the sketch really dark so that it could stand out against all the other colors that I put in. Um, so yeah, but what I'm doing now is I, I've been doing this re recently in all my illustrations, which is I basically have one generic color for most of the values and then I lasso parts of the image that I know is going to be lighter. Um, so essentially I would end up with an image that's like two-tone, kind of like a Mike Mignola comic book look, you know? So I pretty much start out my paintings like this, you know, where I have one color for all the other values and then one light color for the lighter values. And it's basically kind of like a guide for me so that if ever I feel the need to go back with a color dodge or with, you know, any lightning tool, I, I would know exactly where to go. Which in which is in this case, in this particular um, illustration, the light blue areas that I highlighted are going to be the ones that I would end up color dodging later on to really bring out the light areas. So. Now, technically, the background window should have been included in the light blue area. But since I wanted to separate it, because um, I knew that I, I wasn't going to be color dodging that area anyways, I decided to just go ahead and separate it. So typically, in my illustrations, it's typically just two-tone. I, I never do the three-tone. For this particular illustration, I kind of did a third tone just because I knew that I was going to separate what's going to be outside of the scene so so that's why i had it set like that where i had the yellow for the outside scene the light blue area for all my light areas and then the red for everything else but yeah it is definitely a mike mignola mignola effect um i hope i'm saying his name right um for the ones who's curious as to who he is he is the artist that came up with the look for spawn or not spawn um what am i thinking um uh the devil dude <laughs> hell's boy hell boy oh man i was gonna say devil boy uh hell boy uh Mike Mignola was the artist who came up with Hellboy or came up with the look of Hellboy. So yes, he's very renowned for a lot of darks in his comic books. He ten has a tendency for just the two-tone, you know, just light areas and then everything else black. Um, so yeah, I've been kind of like doing that with my illustrations to just kind of help guide me. With some of my value choices and you can see right now see i highlighted the light areas and you kind of just saw me go back with a color dodge brush that's basically why i have that selection in there or that air those areas in there to help me quickly select those areas to help me quickly select those light areas and then go back to it uh, with color dodge or any other lightning tools that i want to use essentially so yeah um but yeah if you take a look at a lot of my illustrations it, they start out a lot like this um see here i am again i'm taking advantage of the of the selection um by adding a layer of orange i think i think i added a layer and put orange or yellowish orange and then putting that layer as color dodge and merging it with the colored with the colors uh, underneath it so yeah i do it throughout I, I i do this technique throughout the painting you know going back and forth over those light areas as well as the dark areas but yeah 
So here I am now doing my favorite thing to do after I've set everything up, I've, after I've done all the photo bashing and all the colors in, then I blend them all in, smudge them all in into this goopy mess that I would end up working on for the rest of the illustration. So yeah. So in this particular illustration, this is this is fairly unique because in a lot of my illustration, I would do photo bashing either as you know to get either to get textures from the photos or to use the photos for color information. Um, so yeah, typically I would put down some quick colors and then photo bash and then smudge everything in into this goopy, nice little base paint mess. But for this one, I just did colors. Um, I'm not really sure why I decided not to photo bash. Probably because I already had that other painting from earlier that I kind of sort of used as a photo bash. Um, if you could recall earlier, I used it as a base to do my colors in. So, yeah, I'm not really sure why I didn't photo bash as much with this one. Um, I guess uh, I was feeling happy with the colors I already got, and maybe I didn't feel the need to put in any more colors from a photo or whatnot. I'm not really sure what my train of thought was, but yeah, typically that's my process is, you know, sketch, photo bash, colors smudge everything in and I didn't photo bash I just went straight to smudging which you see me do right now I'm trying to smudge everything in and really my whole point again to you know remind people what my whole point of the whole smudging thing is I basically just kind of wanted a base paint to work on to put my details on so um I don't need for things to be perfect, I just needed for it to be recognizable or I just wanted certain shapes to be recognizable. So for this particular case, I, I wanted the shapes of the characters recognizable um, while they're all kind of just blended in, while all the colors are kind of just like in a smudgy blended type. So yeah. I'm going back with a multiply in this part right here just to get some more darks in because I realized that I didn't have a whole lot of darks. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Trying to get some more darks in. And going back with some more color dodge. And I think I ended up color dodging that chair on the lower left. Yep, I did. And that costs... Not one little thing that I did cost me problems later on too. Because that chair ended up becoming way too light. And I had to end up darkening that, darkening that chair again. But yeah, all throughout that painting, that chair just kept calling for attention. First, it was perspective issues. And then later on in the painting process, it became value issues. So yeah, this illustration was extremely problematic. And not only that, I just realized too, um, this scene is backlit, which is such a hard thing to paint in illustration or, or in any kind of painting, you know, to have a backlit scene where the your main light is behind all your characters that's a very very hard scene to paint so i had yeah an exhausting time painting this because of all the perspective issues and all the lighting issues but it was so much fun though like i mean because i was really digging the colors even though i knew that there were all those issues that i had to contend with and i had to worry with the best part about this painting of the colors like i really like the colors and how they turn out you know so even though i was sort of frustrated 
you know, at the same time, I had a lot of fun with this one compared to some of my other pieces because the colors were just, it was just really working for me, you know? So yeah.
So for the past few minutes, you've just seen me um, work on the background. Um, I basically had started my detailing process and pretty much what I'm doing right now is uh, pretty much just erasing the outline. Um, and um, as I mentioned before, when I'm detailing, what I really do is I delineate the edges. I add the highlights and I accentuate the shadows. So that's pretty much just what I do. Um, for this particular illustration, I decided to take the sketch after after I had blended everything in. Um, I took a copy of the sketch and very lightly put it back on top of the illustration just so that I can have a guide for where things are. And um, this is what I use to help me figure out where the edges will be and which parts are going to be highlighted and which parts are going to be in shadow. Um, so yeah, that's all I've been doing for the past few minutes is just working in the background. I did have to do a few edits on it on the background um as in the case of this one I, I realized that the little bumps the grid bumps on the floor were a little off it looks a little off perspective wise so i kind of just did a few edits it was looking too stretch it was what was going on so i decided to redo the whole sketch of it and uh yeah, kind of just rework those details in basically. Um, so yeah, uh, you see me go through or paint a few highlights on top of the light sketch that I was talking about. And then for this floor, I don't think I ever really, I went back with shadows, but you'll see me eventually on kind of just smudge everything down again so that it looks a little less outliney and more kind of painterly. Um, and then I went back with highlights again. So yeah, quite a lot of work, quite a lot of back and forth just to get a look that I wanted, which is this painterly look. Um, so yeah. Now I'm working on the walls, the paddings on the walls. I guess is the best way to describe it. Um, trying to think of what the right terminology for it is, and I can't really think of the correct terminology. But it's basically just paddings. You see it a lot in in space stations. Where everything's kind of padded so that you know when you get thrown around and when you're going through the space station you don't exactly hurt yourself in a way so yeah but that's what they they're supposed to be um some people might have to just look at it and think of it as a panel uh so i hope that's not the case i hope that they don't think that because I really intend for those walls to be more padding rather than just panels. But, you know, if a person wants to see it as a panel, then I guess I didn't do such a great job detailing that area. But, you know, I mean, it works for me, so, yeah. You can see in the chair right now, it's a little light. Uh, you'll see me eventually change all this later on. I think I might have even added a color dodge on it at some one. I mean, at one point after this part right now, I think I might have gone back and did some color dodge on it and then kind of realized that, wait, oh, there's the color dodge I was talking about. Yeah, that part was a mistake. That, that's too light. It became too light. Um, I didn't recognize it then I was thinking that oh yeah this is looking okay but eventually when the image became more complete I realized that that was too light in contrast with everything else so yeah 
in comparison to everything else it was too light oh i actually recognized it fairly early on i thought i did the edit later i might have actually gone back and edited it again later but we'll see And at this point, like this whole background area is almost complete, uh, which means that I'm going to be starting work on the characters pretty soon, which took me a long time, a very long, long time. <laughs>this maxim or uh, this little rule that I try to follow and abide as much as I can when I'm doing my digital painting and that rule is not to zoom in too much um, this is a really good piece of advice and uh, you'll hear a lot of people go back and forth between this advice some people say to zoom in some people say not to zoom in um, I'm in the camp of not to zoom in mainly because what happens when when I zoom in too much um, I end up over detailing and I end up unbalancing a lot of the image so when I do zoom in I really try my best to be to have the zoom in area not to zoom in like I you know try to basically zoom in to about a quarter or a third size of the painting and I try not to zoom in too much like if I find myself zooming into about one-fifth of the area of the painting I feel that that's to zoom in and that that could cause me to start over detailing because um, Basically what ends up happening is when you're to zoom in like that, like if you only zoom in to one seventh of the whole illustration or the whole area, what ends up happening is that you don't see the other parts of the painting. So when you're in the middle of detailing, you kind of get lost in the detailing and you forget to balance it with all the other areas around it. 
so one of my rules is that i try not to zoom in no more than a third of the size of the painting or a quarter of the size of the painting which is what i'm trying to do right now when i started detailing ezra i really tried my best not to zoom in too much but it was causing me to really mess up the face um you'll see me like change my uh rule about this later on um when i started doing hera uh, which is the green lady right next to ezra ezra is the guy that i'm detailing right now and right now he's kind of looking okay the face is still kind of wonky everything else about him is fine you know there's there's some posture issues that i couldn't quite resolve you know but for the most part he's looking okay his face though um is kind of wonky and what ends up happening is that you'll see me really zoom in on the face to like fix that you know which is one of those rare cases where i don't follow my rule you know or i break my own rule um because i feel like faces are such a focal point that they do deserve that over detailing you know um so yeah you'll see me do that with Hera first and then I went back to Ezra and zoom in some more to fix this face but um yeah I we just went or I just noticed that we I did a few color changes and a few color tweaks um I realized that I guess at that point I realized that my colors were getting too saturated so I kind of desaturated them in a way to kind of help balance things out so you saw me just do that just now and then I went back again chose some of the highlighted areas again just so that I could go back and just sweep another color dodge um, brush stroke in those areas into those areas so yeah but yeah going back to the original conversation um i try not to zoom in too much there are times where i break that rule um cases like now for example where i'm trying to create the selection shape for the outside area that i i feel like i needed to zoom in to about one fifth or one sixth the size of the painting just so that i could really so I, just so that i really know like which parts to mask out essentially so yeah, there are, you know, exceptions to that rule. But for the most part, when I'm painting, I'm really trying my best to stay to the one-fourth, one-third zoom in. If you look to the lower right uh, of the video right now, you see me zoom in to about a quarter of the painting. And I try not to zoom in more than that because I, again, like I said, if I'm detailing a particular area, I need to make sure that I'm looking at all the other areas surrounding it just so that I know that what I'm doing in that part will remain consistently balanced with everything else. So yeah. But again, there's exceptions to the rule, which you'll see me violate in a second. Oh, you'll see me have execute that exception in a second, which is right now, actually. I'm working on Harris space right now. So you can see I'm working on her and you'll see me fuss so much about the face um, because I just could not get the look right. Um, so yeah, you'll see me go. You'll see me be a cowboy essentially and just go nuts and zoom in.
And this is what I was talking about, smudging the floor, which uh, I mentioned this earlier, where I smudged the bumps on the floor because it was looking too outliney for me. And so I wanted to get rid of the outline some more by just smudging everything. And then I kind of just went back and delineated the edges by adding a few highlights or so. So yeah. Oh, I was trying to figure out what exactly was going on. I was half expecting the video to start showing me working on Hera, but then I totally just skipped Hera and just kept going to all the characters and then the floor. And then now I realized what I'm doing. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm re-smudging everything because I decided that I want to knock down some more of the outline. Because I just wanted it, I guess, to be more painterly look. <laughs> I'm not sure uh, what my train of thought was at this point in time. But that is exactly what is going on right now. I'm pretty much knocking out all the outline by just smudging it. So, yeah.
Okay, so you just saw me zoom in very close to Ezra's face not too long ago. And that's the part I'm talking about where I, you know, pretty much throughout the whole painting, I really didn't want to do that. But then this is the point. This is the point where I decided, you know what? I didn't want to zoom in, but I really need to zoom in uh, because it just wasn't working for me. I mean, look at Hera's face right now. It just it just looks so wonky. See me how we draw those eyes so many times. Like I just redrew it so many times just to try and make it look decent. And in the end, I couldn't make it work. So. What I did was I drew this, um, I drew this huge version of her face, basically. Kind of did it real quick, you know, smudge everything, kind of had get that painterly look as quickly as I could, you know. And then you you'll see me um, scale this piece down. Um, well, not right now. I don't know why I'm checking my system stats right there. Okay, that was kind of weird, <laughs> but okay, so I'm working on Hera's face, um, you know, kind of putting some details in uh, while it's nice and huge, while it's big and huge. Um, and then I'll scale this down, and when I scale it down, I will zoom in just so that I can have it all situated nicely. So, um, there you go. I'm zoom in. Right about now would be, I would be about one fifth the size of the canvas. Um, I don't have my overview on the right right now, but that's immensely zoom in. Like I try my best not to work this zoom in. Like this right now, that right now was way too zoom in. And when I'm that zoom in on the canvas, I have a tendency to over detail. I have a tendency to mess up things um because like i mentioned if i'm that to zoom in if i'm that close to the canvas i neglect to watch and see what everything else around it is or what what is going on everything else around it basically and whether what i'm doing is balanced with everything else that is around it so so yeah, but there are rare instances, again, like I said, where I just feel the need to do it. So in this case, the face, you know, the face is so pivotal to any illustration, any painting, um, that I felt like I had to zoom in and just really get this down. So yeah. And then when I ended up liking what I did with Hera's face, I ended up going back to Ezra's face and doing the same exact thing where I I drew a large version of his face at first and then scale it down to about the size that he is right now and then zoom in to make all my other minor corrections. And I think I did it with um, Kanan too, which is the guy that Ezra is right next to. Um, so yeah, I also edited his face as well in that manner. But as for Sabine and Zeb, I pretty much stayed zoom out where I was because they're so close to the camera that they're big enough for me to see clearly without me having the need to zoom in. So yeah. But yeah, now that I fixed Hera's face for the most part and I'm detailing the rest of her, I pretty much just zoom back out, you know, because I, again, like I said, I didn't want to fall into the trap of over detailing. So I'm basically just working on her from that far zoom out. And I also wanted to take the time to point out uh, the help that I get from the people that uh, give me critiques on this. A bunch of people from SketchZone.net and the creative uh, group and Facebook. And they give such tremendous advices um, for me um, and helping me troubleshoot like a lot of the things that are kind of not working in this illustration. Um, one of the things that was mentioned that I neglected to realize was that I got Zeb's legs wrong. Um, 
Zeb has um, basically has uh, three joints in his um, in his legs. Oh, before I go that about that, let's <laughs> let me point out Ezra. This this is what I mentioned earlier about me working in Ezra's face from you know a much bigger scale. You know, just trying to get those facial structures in. So this is me drawing Ezra's face, and then I will uh, scale him back down, and then zoom in to add my final touches. So yeah. And there I am, I zoom this in. And that face looked way better than the first one I had. The first one I had was just, it just wasn't cutting it. But yeah, that one was like way better. So yeah. But again, going back to Zeb's legs, I got Zeb's legs wrong. I Zeb's legs are basically kind of like a dog's legs or any, um, or like a horse's legs. Where there's essentially three joints, uh, or two joints. Um, it's basically like the hind leg of most four-legged animals. That's what Zeb has. And for the longest time, I thought Zeb has human legs. And so I drew him with human legs, with just the knee uh, as the pivot point. But in actuality, it has two pivot points. So yeah. So somebody pointed it out to me and I was so glad that somebody corrected me in that one because my painting would have looked really odd if I hadn't, you know, if I hadn't done that edit. And then the other thing that was mentioned was the background, uh, the outside scene, the, the window, the, the area behind Ezra. And that was a contentious point for me um the the thing with that though or my original intent for that area was just to leave it um that whitish blue that i have and i didn't plan on putting anything else in that area i wanted to leave it that blank and my reasoning is and the reason or the reason why i wanted to do it that way was because i wanted it to follow realistic rules which realistically you know if you take a photo of an inside scene if you're in if you're in inside a house or something and you're taking a photo of someone who's in front of a window typically when you take that photo everything outside the window will just be washed out um everything will just be white and the reason why that happens is because the aperture of the lens uh, or the camera adjusts so that it could see the inside area more so that you know you can see the details more um inside um so basically i was just trying to follow that rule you know because i knew that in photography that's what happens in photography either everything is washed out outside and you can see clearly inside or everything is blacked out inside and you can see everything outside clearly you know so that's kind of what happens um now that with hdri in high dynamic range imagery obviously that doesn't happen as much you know uh it still does happen i'm really still surprised that it still kind of does happen even with hdri imagery you know but um yeah for the most part in photographs that's what happens um if you take a photo of a person in front of a window um the stuff outside the window will typically be washed out so that's what i wanted to portray in this illustration i wanted everything outside to be washed out but people kept commenting that the contrast was too high or that the area was too blank or that area was too um too dull essentially and it took me forever to finally cave in because i was like gung-ho on keeping it blank i was like oh, i'm gonna stick to what my original intent was and it took me a while to finally come around and say you know what let's experiment let's see what would happen if i switch some things around and eventually i found a happy medium um, I eventually ended up doing something to that background area 
that very bluish white area right there we're looking at i ended up doing something to it later on in the painting that is very subtle very very minute like you could barely tell that it's there but i realized it helps so much more um but yeah i wanted to thank the people who made comments about that because if you guys hadn't made comments about that um uh, persistently mind you i would not have come around to your you know i would not have come around to fixing it essentially basically so yeah this is my first attempt at putting something in the background but i didn't like it as much so i knocked it out and that was like the first few times i heard commentaries about it and i was like uh i tried it it didn't work you know so i went back to keeping it blank and then eventually later on after getting some more comments about it i was like okay let's try it a second time see what i can do Eventually, I figured something out that I eventually ended up liking.
here's me tweaking that chair a little bit because like I said it was too light and I'm also trying to fix Kanan's face which he's that this part of the illustration I'm still not happy with even to now um Kanan's face was just really troublesome for me and well Kanan in general his posture and his face is was just giving me huge problems all throughout the illustration and again up until now now that this illustration is finished I, I'm still not happy with the way he looks but the reason why I kept him as is is because you know for the most part he's fairly balanced with everyone else so I you know decided not to go OCD and keep editing him but yeah you just saw me tweak his face a little bit because I, I just was not happy with the way he looks and if I'm not wrong I think I went back and did some more edits to it too because what I have so far I, I don't think I was extremely too happy with but yeah right now I'm working on Zeb um, so I finally moved on from Kanan um, if I'm not wrong, like I mentioned, I, I might go back and edit his face later on, but for now I'm concentrating on on Zeb for now. And I think right about this time was when I got that comment about Zeb's legs being wrong, so I did the edit on that fairly quickly too. Yeah, I'm just detailing him out, his arms uh, and his armor. So I decided to work on Sabine's face, Sabine, I think that's how you pronounce her name, um, her face first before finishing um, Zeb because I think at this point I wanted to get a critique on it so I at least wanted to detail her face out and get a good look on her and then um, post it on my social media to get some comments and whatnot, some ideas and where to take it. And for the most part, I just pretty much kept um, in tune with my original sketch. I didn't deviate a whole lot uh, when I started painting. Uh, Sabine is pretty much just the way she is, the way I initially sketched her out. So yeah. And I take it back, I noticed that I'm zooming more than a quarter of my painting. Uh, working on Sabine's face so I realized I actually did zoom in um, on Zeb and on Sabine but yeah for the most part I, I try to stay zoomed out which is what size I'm in right now I'm about a quarter of the painting 
Okay, I'm really curious as to when I start editing Zeb's legs, because I was pretty sure that I did Sabine's face first, and then posted it in Facebook, and then got the critique about the legs. Um, but it it doesn't look like a it doesn't look like a I got the critique yet. Because I haven't worked on the legs yet. And here's me again working in Canaan. <laughs> just like I said, I was just not happy with the way he looks. And I'm still, yeah, I'm not happy with it now. So I did this face, and I know, I remember I didn't keep this face because I realized this face was even worse than the one I have already. But yeah, I was just constantly fussing over him. I, I could not get a good look on him. I yeah <laughs>
So I guess at this point I have not received the comment yet about Zeb's legs because as we can see it's still the same human legs. And I'm back at Kanan's face. Wow, poor guy. He got so much work throughout this whole illustration. So this is the part that I start working on Zeb's legs. I'm basically adding that second joint in. Uh, so he basically has like two knees just essentially. So after working that in and after fixing that, I do believe that the next edit I made was the background. Um, I also did some uh, color balancing tweaks and edits right before I started doing this because uh, I was probably getting comments about that too. And you know, of course I was just color balancing things because when when you're painting stuff, you know, all your added edits um, kind of balance things. So it's always good to just kind of recalibrate and redo your color balance every now and then when you're in the middle of a long illustration like this one but yeah I, I did a color balance before fixing Zeb's legs and then I think after I did uh, his legs I went back and did the stripes because Zeb has stripes in his skin on his skin and I went back and added those in and I also added um, his camel uh, 
the camo style of his armor I highlighted that some more or I made it more obvious by doing a, a multiply layer that you'll see me do in a few minutes so yeah those are the edits that I did on Zeb so here I am doing that camo uh, making it really apparent that he has like this whole camo outfit thing going on so I uh, did a plain color camo first and then I put this put that under multiply I think I don't think I put it as overlay um, or I could have put it as overlay I don't remember yeah the video went by too fast for me to recognize but uh, yeah I did that to make it look even more apparent that he has a camel outfit but yeah Zeb started looking really good after after I did all these edits And here are Zeb's stripes that I'm adding in. I did it in the same fashion as the camo where I put in multiply. I believe it's on multiply. Yep, I set it on multiply and turned it down to about 30%. Which, if I'm not wrong, was what I did with the camo drawing too. But yeah, after those edits, Zeb is pretty much done. And then I start working with Sabine. Sabine, Sabine, however you pronounce her name. So yeah, I guess now would be a great time for me to confess that I actually never watched this show. So for anyone who's watching this video, these this is basically fan art for the show Star Wars Rebels. And it started out as a contest piece. It's a piece that I was going to turn in for the Star Wars Rebels contest. Um, but yeah. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I did not get to finish my entry for it. So I kind of put this in the back burner for like four, two, three, four years. And then I picked it back up again to work on it last year. But yeah, my nephew um, was watching the show then at the time around 2015, 2016. And I saw, I saw snippets of it. Um, and then uh, one time when I was just browsing through the web, um, I was probably browsing some art sites. Uh, I ran into the contest and so I decided, hey, why not enter the contest? Um, and so I started work on it. But then again, like I mentioned, I promptly dropped it because of um, because I didn't get to finish in time. And so, yeah, forgive me if I if I'm mispronouncing all the characters names. Because, like I said, I haven't actually watched the show. But I am a Star Wars fan though, so yeah. <laughs> but here I am working Sabine's, um, on Sabine. And I really love her outfit. I love her. I love my redesign of her armor. I think it's neat and I think it's cool. Um, obviously, it's my own spin to it. Um, so yeah, I, I like my own spin on Sinine's outfit and Zeb's outfit. I think the two out, out, out of all the remakes that I made or redesign that I made, 
uh, out of all the outfit redesigns I made, I like CV and Zeb's the best. I, I thought that I I did good on it, especially Sabine. I really like her outfit. Harris outfit is probably the one that I don't like the most. I, I don't think I put that much effort on her. Uh, Ezra's outfit is pretty much it feels too much the same as the cartoon. Like I, I felt like I didn't really do a whole lot of edits. And again, Kanan, I don't know what to think of his outfit because overall he was just problematic for me and he still is. I mean, I'm looking at him right now and I'm like thinking of all the things that are wrong right now. <laughs> just looking at him and seeing him in this video, I'm like, wow, I could still do so much more edits on him. But I'm going to let it be because I don't want to be too OCD and I don't want to, yeah go over something that I pretty much declared has this finish because for the most part the photo illustration or the illustration is pretty much balanced because really that's pretty much what you do in an illustration especially in a long illustration like this is you just do a balancing act you know whenever you add a detail or whenever you take out a detail you need to make sure that whatever detail you're adding or whatever detail you're taking out is balanced with the rest of the image and that's the reason why, you know, there's this whole kind of disparity between speed paints and, and long illustrations, at least for me in my head. You know, for me, a successful speed paint is when everything is balanced right from the get-go. Um, and a lot of speed painters will tell you, like, that's really hard to achieve. Um, I recently joined Facebook's Spit Paint group. Um, which is really hard for me because like i mentioned before most of my speed paints are around two three hours sometimes five hours i never do the 30 minute speed paint but i'm forcing myself to do the 30 minute speed paint now so i finally joined that group and um there's a few people in that group who are very selective about their speed paints too um i wish i could remember the guy who i'm thinking of um yeah, I, I can't remember his name now. I'm going to have to mention his name later in some other video. But when I looked through his work, um, I realized that he juries it. You know, I, I went through his art station profile and I think his website too. Because I actually think he has his own personal website. And out of all the entries he's put in into the Daily Speed Paint group in his portfolio, he only has about 30 of his favorite speed paints. Um, and if I'm not wrong, he probably has the same feeling that I do when it comes to my speed paint, which how I feel about speed paint is that it's a hit or miss for me. You know, sometimes all the stuff that needs to be accounted for is balanced right from the get go. It has good composition. It has good lighting. It has good value. You know, it has great sketch, it has great edges, you know, all of those need to come together in that one sitting, you know, for a speed paint to be successful. If it doesn't come together in that one sitting and you have to go back to that painting for a second time or the third time, at that point, you kind of destroy the essence of the speed paint, you know. So, yeah, for me you know basically what happens in an illustration is that i'll try to get everything as balanced as much as i can in that in that first get-go in that first speed paint and if everything's not balanced which you know like i said my speed paints are 50 50 sometimes they're great right from the get-go and sometimes they're not and if they're not and i tag that speed paint as an illustration that i want to work on some more then what will end up happening is me you know, adding more details and taking out more details and then me just basically constantly, you know, balancing all the attributes that would make a successful painting successful, you know, which is good lighting, good value, you know, good edges, good composition, um, good colors, even uh, whatnot, or good color choice, good color harmony is more like it. So yeah, all of those things need to be balanced. And so in a long illustration like this, this is pretty much just what I do. It's just constantly just balancing every little thing that I do with everything that I have done so far. So yeah.
I had completely forgotten that I did this. <laughs> okay, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to blur out the edges. Uh, which actually happens in real life too. It's the depth of field effect that you get with most cameras. Uh, very far away objects are blurry and very near objects are very blurry. And so I think this is what I've decided to do to um, eliminate that distortion problem or the problem with the edges being calling out for attention too much. You know, I decided to blur them out to kind of give them this depth of field effect. So yeah, it solved my problem of the whole distortion and whatnot. And it, you know, gave the character a breathing space to be. Because um, like I mentioned, you know, see, uh, I was trying to experiment with cropping the picture again, going back to that old square format. And I realized, no, it's just, it feels too crowded putting it in that square format. So I decided to go ahead and move forward with this whole, um, blurred out effect as a way to address the distortion that's going on in the edges of the illustration. So yeah, this video is almost close to being finished. Um, at this point, I pretty much address uh, a lot of the concerns that people had. Um, again, like I mentioned, the background was a concern for some people. Some people thought that that plain white blue was just too glaring. And so I finally added something to that area um, to address that issue. It's very subtle. It's very faded out, as you can see outside the window. Um, there's something there, but you can't quite tell what it is because it's so faded out. Um, so yeah, um, I put that there to address that whole too blank issue. Uh, but then at the same time, trying to, you know, fade it out as much as I can so that it would have that, um, washed out effect that happens when you, you take photos inside, uh, inside, uh, an interior setting um so yeah i addressed that issue i addressed the issues of the lens distortion on the sides sort of i mean the solution i came up with is not elegant um doing the depth of field blur effect is not probably the best solution to fix that perspective issue in that area i personally think that cropping it out is still the best solution but again as i've mentioned cropping those side out would make the illustration feel too cramped. So again, it's a balancing act. I mean, which one should I go for? Which one should I, what should I do? And in this, in this case, I decided to just go widescreen once again, which seems to be my favorite format for paintings. So yeah, I decided to just go ahead and widescreen, but do that fix that I did, which is kind of do the depth of field blur effects. So at least the edges doesn't call out for attention as much um so yeah i think those were like the main issues um as for the lighting issues uh for the painting being backlit like i think i i did successfully on it um you can tell the details you can see the details even though the scene is backlit and you know people will tell you backlit scenes 
um, typically wash out a lot of details. You know, what ends up happening in backlit scenes are that a lot of de de a lot of the details disappear in the dark areas. But in this one, you know, I feel I feel like it has a good amount of details that did not get lost in the dark areas. So I, I thought that was a success. Um, Kanan, I, I still feel is a failure. Like I, I'm just not happy with him. But the good thing is that he's hidden. He's behind Sabine, so at least you don't see him as much. Um, so yeah, overall, this illustration I, I feel happy about. Um, I just now finished this illustration this year, so really the test of this illustration is whether or not I would still like it two or three years down the road. Um, that's when I know that a, that an illustration is really successful, is if two or three years down the road, I'm still digging it. So yeah, I'm hoping that this would be the case for this illustration. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for going it or for watching it with me. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Good night.